We are Ben and MP, and this is Sailing Yaba, where we are showing the resurrection of pretty much our pirate ship. So subscribe to hop on this journey with us and enjoy the ride. We've got one more sail left, however it's in the tip of the bowsprit, so I'm gonna strap myself to something. It's not a nice drop. Let's go. <laughs> this which is a soft for concrete that's what it says and it should be able to cut through concrete so we're gonna try to cut our ballast stones with this and see how that goes do you think it can cut it we'll see The good news is it is cutting through the material. The bad news is to cut all the stones we have, it's gonna go so slow. So I've got a marble or a stone cutting disc on this circular saw and we'll get the initial cuts done with this and then we'll move over to the saw just to cut it in half because this won't reach all the way through. here at the bow as you might recognize and I'm gonna talk about this piece here which I believe is the cat head this one is an original from Yaba it's an original wood it is reddish which is very nice it looks very nice but it does smell very bad it has like poop smell literally it does smell like sewage it's not a nice smell on the wood anyway it was here this way because we were not sure if it would varnish or paint it but we have just decided that we're gonna go for paint why? it does have some details already of dough, of paste that was put on it to make it smooth so once we varnish it, it's not gonna look very great so we're gonna continue applying that paste to make it very smooth and then paint on top
interesting is this boat that's next to us is going through almost the same process as what Yabao went through, except they haven't replaced all the planks or they haven't had to replace any of the uh, frames. However, it's a lot of planking. They're busy tearing apart the platform right now because it's also rotten. And I just wanted to film it, show you guys some more destruction because it's been a long time. I think that's what everyone likes to see at the end of the day. We have now finally reached the point when all the ballast up to the tanks is in place and we need the tanks to be in place so we can continue adding the ballast that comes after the tanks. Because we need to make the holes in the tanks here before installing them in place because it's easier. So we are about to do that. We need a hole in the tank so we can connect the four tanks together and then we can just make the plumbing system simplified by having them all connected instead of having to individually just feed one by one. The lid is right here in the same direction so it's easier for us to touch the inside and screw it. Let's go! made now I just need to add this if you look from close it has a little o-ring that that's where we're gonna be trusting our lives to and I'm gonna do it ready Hole is made, this is in place. Now I put this little plug just to keep it shut. Now it's the time of truth. We're gonna fill it up with water. I mean, not the 250 liters, but some water just to test if it's working, if it's not leaking, and then we can celebrate, do it on the other tanks, put them in place, and be happy. It's dry! Hey! <laughs> Let's keep going then! the boat and we brought a tank down because we want to make a test that we still haven't done. So what I have here is the main lid, the inspection lid of the tank that we can open. It has a big hole so we can put our hand inside, clean it, now install everything so it's a very nice thing. And it says that this lid has a breather where the air can come out, which is this hole here. Like if I blow, I feel that the air comes out. But I'm scared that once the tank is full, water could also come out. Maybe this is a very dumb test, but just to be sure, we're gonna fill the tank here under the boat, put the lid, make it very, very full, and see if it starts leaking from here. Here we are in the final bit of finishing the bottom of our hole on the inside, which means ballast and tanks are almost done. 
the thing is that here, this part of the boat, the space we have between the flooring and the frames is a bit smaller. So this guy here, I think I never showed it on the videos before, but he's been with us from the beginning of the ballast. This is exactly the shape of one of those stones, but it doesn't weigh 70 kilos, so you can just move it around and test it in places. So this was very helpful. So if you're ever trying to do something similar to this, making a light and easy shape is a very good idea. If I have to put it on the frame, the flooring will come here and you won't fit. You don't want anything heavy on the hole. So we're putting everything always just on the frame. So the idea we came up with was to get those stones, of course we're gonna lose some kilos, but just make a little cut on each side. You'll have like a huge T-shape after all. So we can put it there and that space will fit in the frame on both sides. It will go a bit lower, but it won't touch the hole and it will fit under the flooring. And then the balance situation will be done. And we can start with walls, flooring, furniture, because I can't work with balance anymore. So I'm very happy that this is just the end. And yeah, let's get cutting so we can bring them in. When my uncle was cutting those two, I was not around, I didn't film and everything went perfectly. Then I was filming this one and of course when the camera was there, the moment he was finishing it, it cracked in two. So what happened? He forbid me to continue filming and then he did this one off camera and it went perfectly again. So yeah, now we have three stones that are cut in the shape we need. This one we will ignore that it ever existed we will continue as nothing has ever happened. I think we might only have one more stone to lift up. Of course, I'm saying this now, there's gonna be like three more after, but this is, planning-wise, the last stone that has to be lifted. I also just wanna show you, at the same time, Nico has been corking the 
double bulkhead that's by the foremast. The reason for that is if anything ever happens in the bow, if we hit something or something, whatever, hopefully not, we do have a double bulkhead which is going to be corked and it's going to have the corking compound put over the top and painted nicely. So that's what Nico's been doing now. And then after this, hopefully when all the ballast is in, like we've said a million times in the past, we can finally move on to the next steps. But that's already really exciting because it's meaning we're further than ballast. Finally, the last stone is finally in place. I can't believe we finished bringing all the stones in. This is actually a huge milestone. Stone. <laughs> but we say last stone, it's probably the last planned stone. We might add a few more little ones here and there where we can. How, much tons do we, how many tons do we have now? We have 5.7 tons, so 5,700. 5, Kilos, kilos of stones and also the PVC pipes with the iron scrap inside so 5.7 tons inside but on the inside we're finishing if we still need to add more we might consider something in the keel we want to be able to fit bilge pumps at least six in this area we're thinking uh, some grey water tanks black water tanks they'll need to be found uh, they'll need to be put in a certain area uh, some hydraulics as well we need to make sure the hoses can fit uh, anything that goes under the flooring and then whatever space we have remaining we might just we have some 10 centimeter diameter or is it seven and a half centimeter diameter tubes yeah that we can also still cut and slide and, and fasten also the in some smaller places. hexagonal stones we can also yeah, fit those like these ones like yeah. those so whenever we have space left we can add those stones just in the place we also want to add some more in the kill zone on top so there's still more weight coming but we believe that now the last plant stone is in and that means so much can start happening now like the interior was on hold because of ballast but now finally we can start adding the flooring installing the walls thinking of hydraulics electrics furniture i'm very very excited about this phase that's coming now and also this could not have been done without mp's uncle rafa dad orlando Diego is helping us out a lot, Nezo lifting up stones, Nico, Nico. my godfather Arturo, everyone was so helpful, everyone had Jonathan. injured fingers, so thank you so much. Our osteo, Jonathan, one, because he was helping us carry stones, and second, because he was cracking our backs when we had pain from carrying yeah, stones, so thank you so much. And now we're going to go over the next steps and we really hope you enjoy the next steps and we yes. really hope this goes fast. Who's ready for this new next phase? Me! Yay! Thank you so much for all the people having our backs. Hamster Stone for joining us on Patreon, Martin, Richard and Brenda for donating through PayPal and Joseph, Wiley, Cool Restorations and Herban for the super thanks. Thank you so much and see you all next Sunday.